Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast, where I, your host, Xavier Cruz, a lifelong wrestling fan, will take a lifelong friend through the action, the joys, and the drama of the world of professional wrestling. My co-host, Kelsey Silva, has been bitten by the wrestling bug, and I want to invite you to join us as I take her through the moments that made me a fan. So if you're new to wrestling and would like to get brought up to speed, or a fan who would like to relive some classic matches, promos, and segments through fresh eyes, join us as we embark on a journey through the Attitude Era and beyond. Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the New to Wrestling Podcast. This week, we watched the October 14th, 1996 edition of Monday Night Raw, and the match card is as follows. We had Vader with Jim Cornette versus Phineas Godwin. We had Jerry the King Lawler versus Jake the Snake Roberts. We had Freddie Joe Floyd versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley. We had The Pug versus Farouk, and in the main event, we had Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Heartbreak Kid and WWF champion, Shawn Michaels. All right. This one, a lot. A lot. I have literally three pages of notes. Like, I don't think I've... I don't think I've taken this many notes since the last pay-per-view. I don't think I've taken this many notes since high school. So, (laughs) (laughs) not going to lie. It's been a minute. So, guys, this is the final episode before we get into the In Your House Buried Alive pay-per-view. And as we know from episodes, final episodes prior, it's usually when they try to jam in a lot. And today was no exception. So the yeah. ma- the episode begins with a like little promo of the main event of Stone Cold um, and HBK. Um, basically, it's kind of showing like a montage of Shawn Michaels, kind of his last like couple weeks. The champion can be beaten. Like Stone right. Cold smells blood in the water. Like, is it his time to like come up on top? Mm-hmm. Basically, the gist. Yeah. Um, and then when we get out of that promo, it immediately cuts to vader entering the ring with jim Cornette, um on his way to take on phineas godwin of the godwin brothers Mm -hmm. oh yes um so this match was just kind of it it was just two very big kind of clunky guys kind of like going at it 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 was never going to be like a just like a technical classic was never going to happen it was just two bulls running at each other for like 10 minutes yeah, I will say, which we've talked about, I have uh, some sort of soft spot in my heart for the Goblin Brothers. Mm-hmm. Can't explain why, but I will say that banjo music really goes off. Like their the entrance beginning? music. Yeah, every oh. time it comes on, Xavier and I are like, like, it's, like, and, like it just really goes off for no reason. Like fingers Shredding. are bleeding playing this banjo. Like who? <laughs> um, Shredding. And they only brought out a beagle this time um not a menagerie just because it was you know one wrestler just phineas one wrestler one animal and it was a a really sweet little beagle mm -hmm. and that was it so yeah yeah, kept kept it lighthearted yeah you know kept it kept it cute um but yeah it was just it was just a lot of uh smacking and bumbling and right yeah that's about it so this match was mainly focused on kind of highlighting the fact that vader and psycho sid will be facing each other at the pay-per-view coming up in the beginning when vader is entering the ring they do show the vader bomb that he performed on psycho sid that psycho sid just absolutely ate yeah yeah you did what now like that tickled Right, exactly. That was basically the look on his face. Yeah. Um, Psycho Sid does come down to ringside uh, because Vader was basically dominating the early part of the match. So Psycho Mm -hmm. Sid comes out at ringside, gives kind of a distraction towards Vader, which allows Phineas to kind of finally get some offense in this match. Yeah. Because up to that point, it was all Vader all the time. Yes. Yes. As it often is. As it often is. Phineas gets Vader in the position to do the slop drop, which is his, like, finisher. Mm -hmm. We get kind of, like, a clunky counter, which Vader, like, grabs the ring ropes. Yeah. And then... Yeah, and then kind of, like, knocks him... Knocks Phineas down and then performs a Vader bomb on him to get the pin and the one, two, three. Yeah. So, again, all serving the greater purpose, making Vader look you know big and the monster that he is yeah yeah it's kind of the gist the godwins don't really have anything going on towards the pay-per-view so they can take the l until you know the next time that they yeah and they have their emotional support animals to comfort them they'll They'll be fine they have each other you know what i mean (laughs) like they have hillbilly jim right i love i'm sure he's got some some, like wise words 
yeah uh, yeah they're fine they're like man whatever so all right so after that match we it cuts to jim ross in the ring Mm -hmm. and he will be interviewing mr perfect mr perfect comes down to the ring in his doo-doo caca brown suit like zuki (laughs) brown Wow. It is like the worst color Penis. I've probably ever seen. And then with the most like aggressively, uh, what'd you call that pastel? Like what even is, was that design? Uh, it's paisley. Oh, well, it Horrible. was offensive. <laughs> it, and like the the brown wasn't even like a chocolate brown, which I can get behind a chocolate brown suit, but it was like no, a, it was a brown with yellow undertones. Like doo-doo. it was a quick run to the bathroom, cheeks clenched brown like it was right. not a good look color for him at all especially with like the like the platinum blondish yellow hair like like that is just like strung together in the tiny oh like gosh. the tightest rat tail ponytail oh, you've ever seen it's so bad it's so and bad. my favorite and again, i of- haven't seen him wrestle yet so the only thing i have to base um for his is know, his persona is just what he the, continues to appear as, which is not what I would envision Mr. Perfect to be. But also, again, this is the 90s. Right. So, you know, I guess was he, we're getting was he what everything? the decade was serving. But it's funny because they, I also, I forgot about this trend in the 90s where it was like just like a normal color t-shirt under a suit jacket. And when yes. they were playing back all the times that Hunter Hearst Helmsley had his lady taken by Mr. Perfect, mm-hmm. that's what he was, Mr. Perfect was wearing. It was like a, like a blue, just like V-neck t-shirt with like right. a suit jacket over it. And I was like, I hate that this Like tucked into thing. like joggers. Like, yes. Yes. And I was like, mm-hmm. I'm so glad this died. Please let us never bring this back. It's horrid. I'm so glad <laughs> we left this one. We let it's this horrid. one live in the coffin. I don't want to see it ever again. <laughs> so bad. And my favorite part of this entire interview is... JR basically like commenting on the fact that Mr. Perfect hasn't wrestled like in a minute. And he's like, are you going to be 50% perfect? Are you going to be 75% yeah. perfect? And are you like and, beyond perfect? He's yeah. Like, and and Mr. Perfect, Mr. Perfect goes, do you see any flaws? And I go, um. And we both, um, I can, but um, I have some, I have some notes. Right. Um, But Jim Ross, I mean, he goes, no, no, not one. No. And I was like, Jim, are you okay? Because like the for the last like two weeks he's had beef with literally everybody. Everyone. Everybody. Mr. Perfect, priceless. Hissing. Can't, can't be Hissing. Touched. <laughs> right. I was like, okay. Hissing in the ring. <laughs> All right. Make it make it make sense. Who are you mad at? Is it everybody or is it nobody? Like I don't understand. And it I don't know, is it like the shtick that like no one is at well, obviously people are mad at Mr. Perfect, Hunter Hurst Helmsley being one of them. Is that like his thing? Like he can do no wrong. So like even though JR is literally trying to burn down the WWF with his vicious, vicious words. Right. Like Mr. Perfect, he's like, oh my god, hey, no. yeah, no, you look great. Oh my god, 100%. amazing. She's really give, like, really giving us the like Regina George like special, like really yes, just like, like we treat her face. like the cream awesome. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so unfortunate. The Mr. Perfect interview just ends with him being like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, re- I'm gonna wreck it," and then yeah, he does like, like a lap okay. around. He does like a lap around the ring, you know, just like right. a casual, like a like a light jog, and then... he, oh yeah, he takes off his jacket. He has a little yeah, 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 Mister America. Just, just so that we all know that at a moment's notice, he can go slightly faster. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> um, like... He is ready to be a slow jog king. <laughs> right. Don't test him. Um. Oh my. <laughs> just, just at any given moment, he might get just a little bit quicker. A little and oh. Yeah. So all leading up to the match that's happening next Monday on Raw with Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Oh, so it's not at the pay-per-view. It's not at the pay-per-view like we thought. It's going to be next Monday on Raw. Oh, (laughs) okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So next we have Jerry the King Lawler versus Jake the Snake Roberts. What a roller coaster of emotions this was for us watching. Did you catch what JR said about Jerry the King Lawler while Jerry was going on his like diatribe? I heard some things, but I I just, he says so many things now. I, I told Xavier while we were watching, I felt really bad. But at one point I was like, I didn't even realize Jim Ross was talking. I think because I'm getting so used to him just like word vomiting that I'm able to like tune him out more and like watch the match so I don't think that I did like I knew Mm -hmm. he was talking but I'm not sure I probably missed it so Jerry the King Lawler like during his entire entrance and I guess the commercial break for the Big Bang Boom tour that we were watching basically had a microphone in his hand and was performing a like 
a tight five on Jake the Snake Roberts, what else essentially. Is yeah. Jim Ross comments on that Jerry the King Lawler and Vince McMahon are going to be on commentary next week. Okay. Um, and basically he goes... That I remember. Yeah, basically he calls Jerry the King Lawler a frustrated nightclub comedian. And then he, re- he talks about uh, Vince McMahon saying that somebody who hasn't called a wrestling hold in like 25 years. So like... He was just throwing shade on their name. Just wow. Yeah, he was coming in like hot. He was big mad in the beginning of this. And like, I was amazed you were able to tune it out because he was seething. Like he was mad because the whole, the whole point is that this or next week, Jerry, the King and Vince are supposed to be the ones on commentary, meaning that Kevin Kelly and Jim Ross are not supposed to be on commentary. And Jim Ross is big mad and says that he will show up regardless of what anybody says and that he will be on commentary because he doesn't report to television producer because he's above that. He's a vice president. He doesn't. Yeah, as we've investigated and found out. Wait, that's so it's which actually I get it. Like I'm like slightly horrified for it to just be Vince McMahon and Jerry the King Lawler. Right. I feel like that's going to be a bad time personally. But I mean, who knows? Who knows? But well, I mean, that's what it was in the, be- the beginning. Like the first couple episodes, I'm pretty sure were just, were just the Jerry two of King them? and Vince McMahon. Oh, you might be right about that. Mm-hmm. I've gotten so used to JR. Oh, you're totally right about that because I remember being like, oh, look, JR, he's finally here. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. right so he's going to be there anyway. And he's got, he got, stuff. we know he has stuff, stuff to, to say. say. No, mm-hmm. he has stuff to say. So, wow. Oh, my God. So after oh, dirt Jerry- on their name is done with his tight five we get jake the snake's entrance and he comes mm-hmm. out stumbling with like a with like a whiskey bottle and a brown paper, paper bag. bag he looked a mess his hair was all like messed up he was like sweaty stumbling to the ring came and we out were, late and we were all like uh no way they're doing this right now like as as just like a somebody who is just watching the bit uh, like from a viewer's perspective i was like no way are they making this man a thing who is an actual alcoholic fake drunk on television right now i i was like this if this is real this is extremely uncomfortable like extremely uncomfortable that they're like playing up the yeah it just again Mm -hmm. because you're like that's who he is in real life and that's such a huge part of his like who he is like that he's been like he has to overcome it and it's day by day and whatever so it's like oh god like please don't let this be real that would be so so heinous so So basically he makes it kind of into the ring and then gorilla monsoon the president of the wwf or the on-screen president of the wwf comes Mm -hmm. down and is like um what do you think you're doing um and it cuts to jake the snake roberts kind of cheating his back to jerry the king and he's like don't worry, I'm faking it. And he like blows his breath like at Gorilla Monsoon, being like, see? Minty and, like, flesh. Right. And he's like, don't say anything. <laughs> like, don't say anything. And Gorilla Monsoon's like, you know what? Fine. Give so it up he's, to God. Yeah. He Whatever. turns around and leaves. And Jerry the King Lawler, super stoked into the microphone that he still has for some reason, because he's like, oh, so it's like he's gonna let it happen. Like it's official. This is an official match. Like, don't worry, Jake, I'll come to you. Um, he like saunters over to Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake the Snake comes to life, pops him with the DDT, gives him the one, two, three, and then it is payback time. Oh my god, I love to see it. The brown paper bag out from the corner where he's hiding it and dumps it under all the snake. Over. Under the snake, mind you. Airplane bottle under the snake. <laughs> uh, dumps it all over Jerry's face. All over. And mm. then proceeds to rip the snake out of the bag and, you know, have Jerry the King just wear it like a Britney Spears. I'm a slave and for you. Slave for you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it took a sec for that to like come back to me, but it was it was there. It's the yep. same snake, I'm pretty sure. And no, I'm just kidding. It I mean I mean, it was like two years later. So like maybe it could have been. It might be. Who knows? Um, I will say, love to see the payback. Very happy to see it. Love Jake the snake. The way he manhandles that snake is so uncomfortable to behold. Mm. Because I'm like, sometimes he's throwing it around so much. I'm like, it has to be fake. There's no way he is actually handling a real animal 
like it's a lasso. Like I was like, there's just no way. And then you just, he's holding up the snake and you see it's like little tongue flicker out. And I was like, this mm-hmm. poor note, like I love, again, Jake the snake, love the story. I love this whole thing. Very I was, cool concept. S- yes. Could never happen today. Could never, never happen today. PETA would have shut that down. Get, like literally he was walking to his car, jumped immediately. Right. Snake, no, there's rescue. no way. And that they would have spray painted on his car until all are free. Like without a doubt. Mm. without a doubt love to see the payback like <laughs> love the, love the, love the payback absolutely was here for every moment of it was it long enough no no oh my yes for all that that fuss of like the late engines and stumbling drunk da, 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 and then it's for like all that fuss it. that we've already had a pay-per-view match that Thank jerry you. the king has not stopped Say talking it. about him for months for months Say it. every time jerry the king is on television he cannot not say jake the snake robert's name and then we have we already have a match, and then we pick back up this feud after they have a match, just for him to stumble out kind of drunk, DDT his ass in two and a half seconds, and then pin him. I was like, that's so sad. Sad. I wanted him to like like properly right. kick his ass. Yes. Because okay, was the payback good? A good touch? Yes. But like I want to see them actually wrestle. Like that it is the world wrestling federation. Like that's right. what we're supposed to be, you know, like you would think. Right. And again, like you're saying, they set it up and set it up and set it up. And then literally one move, the match is over. That's right. it. I was like, come on, man. Right. I agree. I agree with you. It was way too short for a feud that was a mile high. Right. And I think I, I, I'm hoping that it's finally like this just puts it like to rest. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what happens after the pay-per-view. Next, we get a follow up from Jesse James, who is giving us more of a kind of enlightened look at this saga that we have begun. <laughs> so basically it goes on that he follows Jeff Jarrett like out of the WWE because he eventually like leaves and mm-hmm. that just led him to the unemployment line. He said he took him from nothing and left him with nothing. And then, you know, they go back into like another segment of him recording the song. Yep. Because we're still talking about this song. And there's more Jays because now with the, the nameless, voiceless producer we talked about last week spoke up today and his name is Jim Johnson. Right. And we're I was all like, gonna... is that his real name? I'll never know. Or are we just riding this double J train to hell? I just right. am just curious. This is where where um Chris Jenner got got the it. The K idea. Oh you know what? She must have she saw said it. Jay's been done. Let's take it back. back <laughs> it's a new era. Yeah. So what was his name? The producer? Jim Johnson. Jim Johnson told us we were going to be amazed by uh, the Jesse rest James, of the album, by his vocal range and what other album or whatever songs that were coming. They also like kind of like teased like a duet with like a famous country singer. And then out of left field, he goes next week, Jesse James will tell us all about his experience in Desert Storm. What? Wait, out of wait, left wait, wait. Field. So your entire existence is to follow around Jeff Jarrett and then apparently sing his songs for him and then follow him out of the WWE. And the entire time you were a part of Desert Storm? Does that sound right to anybody else? And zero disrespect to the men and women of Desert Storm. D- zero disrespect to anyone in the armed services. But like, it was so random and right. so confusing and so out of left field. I was like, what is it? Does he wrestle? Does he sing? Is, is he, he a, a soldier? soldier? Like what? And they, and he was like talking about his traumatic experience, like as a veteran. And then they were like, all right, well, we'll talk about it next week. Went right into the next thing. And I was like, okay, wait, was but that I'm just, real? It's just the juxtaposition of like, we just spent the last three weeks. Like the most interesting about him was that he, sang this song instead of Jeff Jarrett and mind you the entire time he was in Desert Storm he was a member of Operation Desert Storm like what we could have led way to bury the lead like swear swear to god (laughs) what what? Uh, yeah I have nothing no words no words and it just ended and then it just went right into Triple H doing something and I was like wait 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 and I guess we'll find out more next week next week next week I just this man 
is just a, a man of mystery. I mean, he's a like man. the he's like the double Eckies guy at this point. Like, oh, <laughs> most <laughs> interesting man. Because now I'm like, am I interested? Am I intrigued? Am I am now? I intrigued? I don't yeah, know. They keep leaving little breadcrumbs, and I, get, I, I like maybe, bread. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I am. Maybe I am interested. All right. So after they leave us with that little morsel to savor, we get a match. Freddie Joe Floyd versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Um, my sister said something about Hunter Hearst Helmsley that just will stick with me forever. Forever. Uh, forever oh and ever. Um, she said that Hunter looks like the prince in Beauty and the Beast or the beast in Beauty and the Beast when he turns back into a prince. And I will, I was forever changed by that comment because we'll it never is unsee it. so spot on. Like, so- so spot so on. So spot on. The ponytail. The, and it even makes sense, like, his jacket is, like, too big for him, sort of, looking. Mm-hmm. So, like, if he was the beast, and then he transforms into a right. prince, like, it just, it literally is the chin, like, everything. everything. And, and like, I will, I'm forever changed by that observation. Forever. So, shout out to my sister. Thanks, So, Brittany. Hunter comes out with a new beauty this week, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they're the revolving door of women um, that he somehow has connections to and are willing to put up with his personality um, to Ugh. accompany to him, him to the ring. He proceeds to pull out a pair of handcuffs and handcuff this woman to the ring. It he was ha- a spectacle. He handcuffed this woman <laughs> to the ring. Xavier's like, did you hear what I said? <laughs> so that with handcuffs. So that she would not get kidnapped, I guess, by Mr. Perfect. So it what a I, choice. I what okay, because also one, this came after she had to, he made her hold the ropes down so, so, that, so that he could get in. And, and then the ref had to come and pull the ropes down for her to get in. Correct. After he snapped at her to take off his jacket. No. Yeah. And then, but then, and and again, then, so he, she does that for him, gets in the ring, takes mm-hmm. off his jacket. Then they both get out of the ring. Correct. So that he can handcuff her. To the ring. To the ring. It, so many alarms were so raised. many red <laughs> so many again it's really giving beast these, uh yes and it's like that he oh i just, I just like, the, like, like he's trying to set up some like stockholm syndrome yes like, oh my god and just like this is my property and i i make sure my property is secure right so that's, it doesn't that's... wander off right right um, Again, more things that would not fly today. You are not handcuffing a woman to the ring. The, the worst part about it is she did it willingly and seemed very much to enjoy it. And no, I under, I'm not, there... again, we don't kink shame in this house. We don't do it. No, no, we don't. But it's but, just odd. <laughs> no, I was more concerned that like she was like, she seemed surprised by the handcuffs at first and then was just like, clapping and like cheering at like ringside like for him all the while like her one hand is just like <laughs> like stuck so, so she's just like oh. it was just the most absurd thing I've ever seen I'm like baby you're not okay like this man she just took your freedom took <laughs> your friend. she's like well, I don't want to like, make yay, choices yay. Right. like I hate I don't want to be a hater but she really did set us back a little bit there. Yeah. She did. And then Mr. Perfect comes to ringside. And, and I said, I was like, I hope he like regurgita- regurgitates a key like right and just goes Bleh, and has a key. And I hope that's what happens. Lo and behold, that man has a key. Has that a man key. pulls out a key, frees this woman and <laughs> takes her away. It's just and so mind ha- you, like a match is also going on. A match is happening against Freddie Joe the Boots Floyd and um freddie hunter Hurtsamsley. joe the boots <laughs> Floyd. because i he it's just every time i'm like look at him they, they were uh like an evergreen today mm. i tried so hard to go with this whole episode without mentioning them but that's okay they were listen, evergreen listen um, it. <laughs> when it's right it's right and his boots it's are right. right listen snuck it right in there and there we go that's what i'm saying freddie joe the boots floyd 
So the, he, Hunter Hearst Helmsley almost pins him for his first win in a decade, in an eon, in right. 10,000 years. He hits and he him gets with the distracted pedigree. by Mr. Perfect. They're right. basically our, yes, the pedigree, which also. Great. That name doesn't change. He keeps that name forever. Like the name does of Does he movie. really? Yeah. <sighs> He changes the name of the move like, does not. I literally wrote my nose. I was like, I can't wait until Triple H switches this branding because I hate it. Yeah. I oh, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I don't want to hate him as a person. There's only, also, I feel like there's just like all, like only so much you can do with it. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. It's, it's, you can, flat. there's only like really one way to be like a, like a pompous, arrogant, like classist. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And like, why do you want to be that of all the things that you could be? Right. Why do you want to be that? Be all you can be. Triple H gets distracted, runs mm-hmm. after Mr. Perfect, and then gets counted out and loses the match to Freddie. And gets dead. the house down, Floyd. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like. No. Oh, my God. I mean, you know what? Maybe he deserved the win, Freddie Joe the Boots Honestly. Floyd. Maybe he, maybe he deserved it after... Uh, I'm sorry. But also, and also Triple H got decked in the mouth. Like mm. Mr. Perfect just turned around and was like, what? bopped him, just bop bop- and dropped him immediately. The bop and drop, yo. The bop and drop. The bop and drop. It the was, bop and it, drop, it, right it in the pristine. mouth. Pristine. It was pristine. pristine. And then he it just was, was like, perfect. Dare I say? Dare. Oh. 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 <laughs> it was. <laughs> I hate myself. I hate you. I was literally about to say I hate you for just doing that. <laughs> it was perfect. Dare I say? Good for you. Oh. Good for you. But I will say this about Mr. Perfect. Dex, Triple H right in the face, immediately ushers the lady to safety. Like, right. puts her, pushes her, oh, go this way quick, through the back. Right, right, puts right. Puts her right. first, okay? Instead of making her do the things and then handcuffing her in the ring. I will just say that. I, I will say it seems like an upgrade as far as um, <laughs> the preferential treatment. I get it. I get it now. And then we get a... Stone Cold promo on Bret Hart. It is short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Basically, he's like, you were too much of a coward to answer when I called you out previously. So now I'm going to whip the ass of the guy that whipped your ass and sent you home. So do what you will with that information. Basically, he just is hell bent on calling out Bret Hart and calling him a coward until he shows his face. And I'm into it. I can't lie. I'm into it. I... He's like, I'm. If I can't beat you, I'll beat the person that beat you. So then you'll right. know I really can beat you. Right. I love that level of pettiness. I really mm-hmm. do. He's like, um, I got this. So we'll show your little face when you feel like it. Yeah. I'll be here running shit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, because Stone Cold said so. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if that's how he like went about it from now on, from like that point forward. I wish that would be great. I would love it. I would eat that up. Mm. I can't even lie. One hundred percent. Next, we get a promo from the one and only, the incomparable Sunny. Mm. Oh, Sunny oh. comes out in a little purple, like kind of sixties inspired outfit um mm-hmm. big big old white boots comes oh. out and basically i and the promo starts in a way that makes it sound like she's going to introduce like a new her new client you know i was mean? amped like, i was hyped because we know she's like she's like down and out recently she doesn't have basically any more clients mm-hmm. um so what's going on so we were i thought she was going to announce another one to her like roster and she's like introducing you to the hottest the like sexiest the best thing that's ever happened to the wwf and she's like me and then another giant sign of her and at least this time it was not her linkedin profile swear it was was actually hit me baby one more time thank you god and i was like you know what i can get behind this now i can i can get behind it a little bit if you're gonna blow up a poster of yourself that is like 300 feet tall Mm -hmm. make it a good one yeah that's what i'm saying it it should not have taken them this long to figure that out i'm just i'm just saying if you're gonna put your face or your body on a giant poster that picture better be Better be 
This isn't Perfect. this isn't no like fall play promo. All right. Get it out of here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And is it too? I'm glad it was a new photo because I was like, really? We're gonna do this whole spiel and you're gonna do the same photo? Right. The last two times they did it. I was like, at least give me a new one. Like right. instead 100%. of just like remember this. It, it felt like they spent like way too much money on the prop. So they had to keep using the prop, you know? I, yes. And it's I just see. like, but that kind of like grand it's a one and done baby one and done Start, the like, money's already gone 100 percent. like you you take the horse and carriage to the event and then it goes away like there's no yeah. like you you don't see it, it. turns you back into a pumpkin babe that's it you don't then like drive it through mcdonald's like it's just oh i'm tired of seeing it like let's move on amen amen so after the promo sunny joins jr and kevin kelly at the commentary desk because she's going to call the next match uh, but before that happens, we get a promo from Mankind and Paul Bear. Mm. It's raining. Like, they have suddenly had kind of a change in emotion, a change in, like, kind of feeling. No longer is he, like, scared that he's going to be the one, like, in the coffin. He's saying, it's not my body that's going to be in the grave. It's going to be The Undertaker's body. Mm -hmm. um, he's, like, covered in dirt. Like, it's like raining so hard he's just mm -hmm. like you you really kind of see like the wheels like working in his head you know like he's like convinced himself that like he's gonna be the one to like turn this around he's now like he's gone i think he's scared himself so far into being like angry you know what yes. i mean i have to say it really gave the the one batman movie is it the dark knight rises with where he's like in the pit and he has like a broken back and he has to like Oh, the last like, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and he has to, like, basically, he's broken. Like, like mind, body, spirit, he is broken. And he's right. like, I will never defeat Bane. I'll just never get there. Like, it's right. just, it's over. He won. And then he literally, like, physically works himself back into being like, no, nah, like, I could do this. And, like, right, gets right. back there. It's like that classic, you know. You gotta break you, know, you to build you up stronger kind of yes. deal. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, and, that, but, and that's the thing. And I don't know we'll see what that like kind of turns into like did the undertaker break mankind into becoming like an even like more dangerous person yes like it's, we'll find out it's i'm so excited to see this match because i really like again and i know i already said this but it really could go either way and i wouldn't be upset either way that it went obviously i love the undertaker and i want the undertaker to win right because I also just want that vengeance that sweet sweet vengeance right um because i hate paul bear more than anybody but, um, <laughs> judas judas who hath betrayed me thrice i just <laughs> like Perfect. i yeah but i i just am excited to see who this version of mankind will be if it's because it seems like he's going to be different like it seems like they're psyching it up or hyping it up to a way where he will be a different like he'll be mankind but there'll be a different like different like edge to him yeah, yeah, yeah yes thank you yeah so only time will tell. And yeah. then Paul Bear kind of takes over. He's like, loyalty means nothing. And then basically goes on to say, like, it's the Undertaker's fault. It's the Creatures of the Night's fault. Like, you brought sure. this on yourself. Sure. Um, It's all going to come to a head at Buried Alive. Following match, we had The Pug, who we were just as surprised to see, as you all are, I'm sure, hearing it, yeah. Um, that he was back versus Farouk. Um, Sonny's on commentary for this one. They have had an amicable split. They have addressed it now. Um, Sunny has addressed it now. Basically, mm -hmm. she's like, we're still friends. I still help out from time to time. She has lots of friends. She's very popular. Uh, <laughs> so that that was basically the gist of the, the breakup was that they're cool. They're just not working together anymore. Yeah, which was, it's just weird. And I still don't really understand why, but. Mm -hmm. My favorite thing about this was when JR fully just calls out Sonny for putting Farouk in a helmet. Like, and, and you she, know what? And, and he was like, he was like, someone explain this to me, why they're putting a like football, all American, 300 pound, like man in this like archaic helmet. Like he was like, someone make this make sense to me. And, and you know what? Thank God he said it because- Because we've been saying it for We've weeks. been saying it. <laughs> we've been, we've we, been saying it. That is the dumbest been... thing I've ever seen. And he was like, I just, and he, it was like the, um, 
I forget what it's called, but like the the abstract of a thesis. Like he it's it was like a chunk of just like a why, why would they put him in this? He is an all-American da 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 da. To <laughs> I will right. explain in this essay why. I think this right, is right, right, right. <laughs> he literally like, pulls out like a PowerPoint presentation that's like 18 slides long. And it's just like. Yeah, the origins of the helmet. Like he goes deep. And mm -hmm. I like, I was waiting for it. And I'm again, I'm I'm finally glad somebody said it. I really am. Because Me too. It needed make to be it addressed. Make it make sense. Make it, it, it make needed sense. To be addressed. It was the Although like I will world. say as much as like JR has been kind of like annoying recently. He's been saying some like pretty spot on things every now and again in regards to like some of the other wrestlers or the things that are going on. Um, they, he's been coming through with some like some like little nuggets of truth. So, yeah, I mean, I annoying, I guess, like in terms of just like, can you also call the match? But like when you get some of the info that he's sharing, you're like, oh, Oh wait, what well, what did he just say? Like it's he's one hundred. He dropped in T T T T T T. Crazy. Uh, so this match was very physical because yeah. Farouk is very physical. Big boy. Um, so basically, Farouk's just running over the pug a majority of the match. Uh, mm -hmm. He gets him in the the tiger bite, which is that like overhead like slam, which is like his mm -hmm. finisher, um, and then gets the pinfall victory. One two three. This is leading up to his Intercontinental Championship match against Mark Miro at the pay-per-view. So once again, it's making the, the challenger look strong going into a, like, pay-per-view match. Right. Um, and then last week, they did the same for Mark Miro. Right. He had a, he had a, a win the previous week. Right, um, right, right. But this cuts to a live wire segment with oh. Ahmed Johnson. Um, so he's... Basically, this is the first like live anything he's done since he's been out on like injury so he's like taking live wire is like a show that they answer calls and questions and emails and faxes from mm -hmm. wwf fans and apparently farouk like called in and wild it was wild i they honestly get... highly encourage anyone listening to look up this clip if they can find it it right. is it's ahmed johnson on live wire with farouk calling in 1996 1996 crazy xavier and i were like jaw dropped the whole time because it's calm but it's fierce it is so right. aggressive basically i'm in i'm in johnson's like look i i don't even take it personally but i like cannot let you walk around having done that to me without doing something he's yep. like basically Farouk was was trying to be like oh like you like we grew up the same like you know there are like no rules blah 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 and like Ahmed Johnson's like that's fine but that's not going to stop me from sticking my foot in your ass and Literally. we were like oh it was amazing so calm was like oh uh, yeah I mean I I hear what you're saying but that's not going to stop me from putting my foot up your ass and I was like <laughs> like and then and then he goes he goes, you did me a favor. You woke me up. You, all you did was let, like made sure that I knew that I have to do this alone, that I can't trust anybody, that nobody has your back and like all of these things. And he's just like, he's like, thank you for doing me that favor because this is not over. This needs to get settled. And like, then Farouk starts hitting him with like the low blows. He's like, oh, like what's a woman want with like half a man? Like all of these sob stories like going on. Hope your other kidney is in order because like right. otherwise, what are you good for? And I was like, oh my. And then Ahmed Johnson's like, it's like, we don't even have to wait. Where you live? I'll come to you. I'll come right to now. your house. He had the earpiece in his hand like this. I'll come to your house. I'll come to your house right now. Drop the Addy. Drop it. I want to know. Oh, 100%. I was like, oh. It was so good. It was so good. So good. And again, it's weird because they never yell. No, they it's never pretty... like, raise their voice, really. But Ooh. it is like the severity of the words is there. Like there is just That's this like intensity that that like, you know, whatever they're saying, they mean it. Like, yeah, you know, what I mean? there's, there's always like there are certain promos where you're like, is it acting? Is it real? That yeah. one just felt very real. So, so real. Because you know what? Like we were saying, like all we're all bark, no bite. That the way that they were handling it was very much bite. Like right. all bite, minimal bark. Right. And I want to see it. Right. Because it's 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 just like building up to this like fever pitch at this point. 
because he like because like he is genuinely injured and genuinely this is taking a long time but like for him to like recover i mean it's a huge it was like kidney failure or whatever that like the anticipation of like i can only imagine what it must be like to sit at home and watch the man that put you on the shelf contend for the title that you had to give up because of him can you imagine i would be livid it would be my and that's what i was gonna say like is this like his villain origin story because i would be shook i would be livid right livid stewing i'd be at home and like you know not even be able to do anything because you can't like because i'm sure he wasn't even able to train for weeks like just right. he just had to sit there like that would mm-hmm. that would drive any normal person insane especially when it's something like it's not like your corporate job where you have to take no. like six weeks off like this is a dream that is hard to achieve like to be in something like this and then to have it taken and then like watch somebody wow like and then watch the person who took it from you like be successful right wild i get it and when he, but when he was saying when ahmed was saying like oh i just you woke me up there's no friends like, I have to do this on my own. I was like, okay, does that mean, like, when he does come back, like, he and Shawn Michaels are going to have beef? Because they were, like, they were, like, homies. I, I think it's just, like, I, maybe, I don't know. But I I, I feel like it's it, it was more just kind of, like, in the moment with, like, Farouk just trying to be, like, I don't know. Because it, it came out of, like, nowhere. It was, like, a shock to, right. like, he didn't even know, like, Farouk was in the WWF. So right. it's, it's less, I feel like it's less, like, a, like, specifically, like, his friends and more just, like, you literally have to watch your back at all times because right. people come okay. out of like nowhere Left field, and yeah. like, I didn't even know you existed and you took me out for months. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then, and then when Farouk was like, Oh, well it's, I'm going to stop anybody who gets in my way. This isn't about like the way we grew up. I'm going to stop anybody who gets in front of me and gets in there. I was like, sir, you, you him. ambushed him. Like, what do you mean gets right. in front of you? You came out of the left field and came in and assault assaulted him like just like what do you mean i was, I was just like and, I, and I, I think his maybe the logic is like he was the intercontinental champion and farouk wanted that so like you know he said like anybody that gets in the way of like what i want yeah okay so, like true, maybe true. that was his logic but even yeah. then it's like the the way that it was like presented made it sound like like Ahmed got in like Farouk's way and it's like no it's very much not the case like you very much very inserted much. yourself into his path yeah so, but we'll see what happens I'm oh, when so that, excited when that comes to a head oh ooh, it's gonna be I good. can't when when Ahmed Johnson comes back because I feel very confident that he will I'm going to lose my beans I'm gonna lose it I'm gonna be yeah. so excited um can't and wait. then we have our main event which is Stone Cold Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels so we get Stone Cold's entrance and then we get a promo from The Undertaker. And it was, I think, his best one yet. Best one yet. He's standing above the grave, kind of like talking like down, like into it. He's like talking about mankind. There's like this like weird echo going on with his voice. It's so intense. Something he mentioned his purple fists, and I wrote that down because I thought it was hilarious. Um, he said something about like you've escaped to like my purple fists or something. Oh, like before. every time you escaped my purple fists, you grew stronger. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, so the problem was so good. And then, but my favorite part is when he goes like, "I will be your judge, jury, and executioner," and I was like, "Oh, so good. That so is so good. good. So good." And I love to, again, I, I just love the details so much. Like, so then this time they put purple like around his eyes Mm -hmm. and like the way that they did the coloring of the promo, it was like, like, especially because he mentions the purple gloves, like you really notice the purple and like the purple gloves with the little purple, um, like things he has with his boots. And then just like the purple around the eyes. I was like, this is just. I love mm-hmm. those little touches that just add such a depth to it. Um, and like the fact that they had the camera in the grave and it was mm-hmm. like pointing up at him and he was talking and it created the echo. It was so just good. And then so like, good. there were like these like very short, like kind of like <gasps> flashbacks, but yes. they were in black and white. And it was a crack of thunder. Yeah, it was and- like a crack of thunder. And then it, it was like a, like a very quick like flashback to like him like feuding with mankind. But it yeah. was just like, 
oh, it was so good because like then it would immediately like cut back and his face is just like right there. Oh, yeah. And there's just like one moment where he is like has like deadlocked eyes like with the camera and you're just like, I'm I might actually shit. Like I'm scared. Like there's I'm this one point where like he is so intense and you're just like, damn it, that's good. That is so, so good. You are just ca- you just get captivated by him. Mm-hmm. And like it, it again it's so well done it's well written like I don't know if he like who writes it or he if he writes it if there's like a collaboration or whatever but like the writing itself of what he actually says is so good like mm-hmm. it, I, and it's simple it drives it home and again you're just ca- you're just captivated it's amazing and like he does such a good job of like specifically like choosing language that works really well with his character right 100%. you know what i mean like his promos are so like so believable because of the verbiage like in it is just like a, you fully believe that like this man comes from like the underworld or something you know yes. what i mean like you think this man is not human just based on like the like the everything that he presents like to you and that yes. is so impressive to do like so impressive because when you see other people wrestling like I can fully look at Shawn Michaels or whoever and be like that is a person that exists outside of this like I can un- like right. see how they would exist outside of wrestling but the Undertaker I'm like he just begins and ends like within this character like I don't ever imagine seeing him as anything else other than this entity because he's right. just in it so fully all the time which I know is like why he's so revered for many reasons it's one of the many reasons he's so revered as a wrestler but like it really is insane to think about like again when Shawn Michaels is calling from San Antonio Texas I can see him like lounging around his house and like doing whatever and I can't ever invite like the Undertaker spends his time in graveyards that's in his free time that's all I can envision that's it that's it and that's that's like a credit to this man like yes. this man is like so. a legend, an absolute legend. That's just leading up to the buried alive match, which I, we are going to like really truly live for that one. Live. Uh, Xavier and I were texting this morning, and I was like, I woke up today sad that our episode today wasn't about the pay per view. Oh my god, me too. I was like, wait, is it the pay per view one? And I was like, you no. were like, you were like, oh man, I'm bummed it's not the pay per view. I was like, oh my god, I literally thought that when I woke up this morning, I was like, dang, which so. great episode, but I was like, oh, cannot wait for this freaking. I know. Pay-per-view. Don't worry, guys. One more week. One more week. We got this. Hang in there. Hang in there. And then, so after we get the Undertaker promo, we get a promo from Vader with Jim Cornette um, because they are watching the Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels match from the backstage area. Basically, Jim Cornette is not impressed. Mm. He he is basically going on and on about like Vader is going to be the one to challenge Shawn Michaels at Survivor Series. It's just a matter of time. And like when Vader gets his like rightful place, um, he's going to squash him, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, all the while, Vader is growling. Oh, um, barking. <laughs> like, bully. so loud. If an animal sounded like that, you wouldn't think highly of that animal you know what i mean like you you'd think that dog was like not trained well you know (laughs) you would would be misbehaving but i guess that's that's i guess that's like vader's thing is like he's like the the mad dog on jim Cornette's leash i guess like i I, guess is like kind of the whole thing like um i don't know like i i very much respect who vader is as a wrestler because he is like he's just huge he's very talented and and whatever but like yeah they kind of just like sometimes i don't know they like just make him like a big dumb animal sometimes like make yeah. him seem that way and i'm like i kind of like wish there was a little bit more here but again i guess is that the point like he's again he's just the mad dog at the end of jim Cornette's leash and that's just like who his he is. thing yeah, yeah. I, but i also i think in wrestling like up until like kind of where we're at now like it, it was usually very plain like plain to see like good guy bad guy and like it Mm. had to be very like over the top in that way whereas like like the villains were very like cartoonish villains and i think he kind of comes from that era where like where like the villains had to be kind of over the top or like outlandish to be kind of like differentiated from whatever and usually the villains are like the like monster heels which are like these like gargantuan men who are like kind of put into this like 
box of being like, oh, like you're going to be like this is like giant bad guy. Like you're mm. just the kind of yeah, and that that happens a lot. Not saying that like Vader necessarily fits into that mold. He's very like his athleticism kind of breaks him from that. Right. Um, but it is a formula that is in place. That so makes a lot of sense. You know, it, it's not. It's probably just them like not rocking the boat more than anything else. Right. And that makes sense. And again, it, it kind of um, harkens back to what Jim Cornette was saying is like, you guys don't want this person as your champion, which right. is why you won't give him the opportunity. And like, it kind of, like it all kind of works right. together. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the imagery and the the storyline. Yeah, that makes sense. So this match was fantastic. Mostly yeah. because of the two parties involved. There was like, Lots of reversals, lots of back and forth. There, it, it was very technically sound. The two of them. Um, yeah, my God. Yeah. Um, and it was just kind of I, it was just kind of frustrating because there was so many, like promos and things yes. during this match because this is a match that will eventually headline a WrestleMania. The two of them. Because so, was this the first time they? No, this isn't the first time they wrestled together. Is I it? think in a singles match, maybe yeah. on like that we've seen. Yeah, I think it is, right? That, that, that we've seen the two of them wrestle. Yes. Wow. That's so, like history being made. So they're both like fantastic. And like, I don't know, they just, there's, there's too many things going on. And like this yes. match is neither of their story like together. So I understand yes. the okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like kind of putting, you know what I mean? Like this is Stone Cold is clearly going on to a feud with Bret Hart. Yes. And, Sean is going to go on to face one of these two giants. Yes. Um, so like the, the importance is not placed on these two, like being in a match together necessarily. Right. It's more that it's bringing all of their like storyline elements to a head together. in one spot, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which is fine considering we're going into a pay-per-view and you want to get as many of the highlighted superstars from that show onto the last show before, you know, you go into that. But, I will say I'm always a little like a little bit disappointed because they are so good. Yeah. That I would have liked to have seen just them like just go at it. Granted, this was not yes. for the world title. This was not like, you know, again, not their storyline. So I understand it. But from like a from a selfish point of view, I just want to see them fight. Like I just uh, want to see them wrestle. A hundred percent. And it's weird because like I I didn't realize it was happening. I don't know if I missed like the fact that they were going to wrestle, like if there was an announcement and I just missed it. I, cause I didn't remember that they were going to be wrestling. Mm. And then when they announced it in the beginning of the episode, I was like, Oh my God, I can't wait to see that. That's going to be insane. Right. And mm-hmm. I could have very well, my memory, I could have very well said like, I can't wait to see it on last week's episode and just totally forgot. But I like, they are so good. Both of them, like you said, just reiterating, but like, I feel like I missed the whole thing for some reason, I guess, because there was just so much, right? Of, so uh, many other because, things going on. You didn't even see it. So, yeah, because we had a, the promo from The Undertaker. We had a yep. promo from Vader. We yep. also had a promo from Psycho Sid, um, oh, which we haven't yeah. even talked about because, like, Psycho Sid's nuts. So it's just him kind of, like, tackling to himself, heavy, like, heavy breathing and calling himself the ruler of the world. Like, that's... That's Psycho Sid's thing. Um, as far as Psycho Sid's promos go, though, that was a. I thought it was a very well done one. I mean, right. and he's just like in the locker room, hysterically laughing to himself. But like, yeah, they're well, brand for him, and it right. was well done and short right. and not too invasive. Um. Yeah. So they get like back to the match, and then, but then, like almost immediately after they cut back to like the action, Vader attacks Shawn Michaels. He gets involved in the match, which gives Shawn Michaels the the win via disqualification. Savio mm-hmm. Vega comes out because he's got a match against Stone Cold. And also he's just down to clown always, apparently. Recently, I said, I was like, Sav- I really wrote my notes. Savio Vega again? He is just red. He's just jumping in like all of the fights. He's like climbing in the rafters, waiting for someone he has a fight with. And then he's like, boom. Like he's just waiting. And I <laughs> yeah. love that about him. I love it. I love to see the energy. I love to see the initiative. When they were like, oh, look out. I was like, oh, who is it? It's got to be Psycho Sid. They go, it's Savio Vega. I was like, what? <laughs> Again? Again? I love this guy. Get in there. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so good. Funny. And then Psycho Sid eventually does come and out Psycho to the Sid ring. And Psycho Sid does show up, yes. And also, fake Razor and fake Diesel were just kind of chilling in the entryway. Just, like, assessing. Just kind of, like, yeah, looking at the situation, mm-hmm. just kind of seeing the damage. They have, they half rot. And, like... 
I did, they were just kind of there. I don't really know what that was about. Yeah. Or where they're going to try and take this next. Because I know in the last couple of weeks, like Sabio Vega did have a match against like Razor. Unsure of what's going to happen with Razor and Diesel. We'll see um, in the next couple of weeks because clearly their story is intertwined with JR's apparently. So, yes. So we're going to see. Every, yeah, basically everybody came. Everybody came out for the last match pretty much. I was like, and at then, this point, make it yeah. like a the end of a fashion show where everyone just walks out in their outfits like, <laughs> Right. So Savio ends up like feuding with Stone Cold. Uh, Psycho Sid ends up feuding with like Vader for like a little bit. Sean also gets his like licks in. And then crazy the, licks though. The ep- oh yeah. He basically he like runs the ropes, like knocks Austin down, and then clotheslines him like out of the ring. But it happened so fast that Kelsey was just like, What is this blur? Um, it was he literally was like bing, 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 and he like got some ridiculous hits. Like he's insane. so fast. He's just so, so speedy. speedy. Um, and then the match basically ends so with with Psycho Sid and Shawn Michaels kind of exchanging like words because while they were kind of feuding with others they like bumped into each other and since they are like potential uh opponents at survivor series there's kind of a little bit of a like a yo like what's up like what's up what's up they did make up at the end yeah yeah they seemed like they like this bumped and whatever Mm -hmm. but like i for one but there is tension and i love sean michaels is shorter than most of the other wrestlers especially psycho say who's 10 thousand feet tall right um he was literally like on his tippy toes like in his face oh, like, yeah, like yelling i love it i he love that he doesn't care i love that he doesn't care he's just like yeah he, what? he like, always what? says more guts than brains always he and i love it almost I love every his, week he's so honest he's just like yeah i don't i don't know what i'm doing i just get out there and do it and i'm like good right. job sean good job sean oh, we're rooting sweetie. for you <laughs> <laughs> get out there <laughs> um all right guys so that was this week's episode uh next week we are going to have the pay-per-view so look out for a slightly longer episode um they tend to be with the pay-per-views yeah um, but it's one we're very excited for it is so it is in your house buried alive we are going to have the undertaker versus mankind in a very buried alive match we are going to have who else is wrestling who else we got? Psycho Sid and Psycho Vader. Psycho Sid and Vader. We're going to have Sabio Vega and Stone Cold Steve Austin. We're going to have Mark Miro versus Farouk for the Intercontinental oh, for the Inter- Championship. Um, and I think we're going to have... Oh, yeah. In the return match from last pay-per-view, we're going to have the Smoking Guns versus uh, the British Bulldog and Owen Hart for the oh. WWE Tag Team Championship. Ooh. Ooh, okay yeah that's gonna be a good one we might wa- we might witness a homicide <laughs> we we honestly might we uh, might witness a very alive homicide so all right Crazy. guys so thank you as always for joining us we appreciate it and yeah. we catch you next week we'll see you then bye bye